The following video will give you a step-by-step -step demonstration for easily installing your auto slide to an existing sliding door in your home. Before you begin, you need to make sure you have an electrical outlet where the auto slide will be installed. If you don't have one, a qualified electrician will be needed to put this in. Tools you will need. Number two Phillips head screwdriver, preferably magnetic. Marking pencil. Tape measure. Hacksaw may be required. Stanley knife. File. Pliers. A square. Drill. 1 8 and 1 half inch drill bit. What's in the box? When you open the box, you will find one auto slide drive unit with cover attached, one optional mounting bracket, two racks, two end rack caps, two wireless push button controls, friction tester, power adapter, instruction booklet, various screw fittings. Step one, friction test. To ensure your door will work with the auto slide unit, attach the friction tester using the Velcro looped around the door handle. Pull the door open and closed three times with the friction tester handle. If the Velcro holds in place, your door is ready for installation. If it breaks, the friction of the sliding door has to be reduced. This may mean replacing the track wheels or removing the weather seals rubbing against the sliding doors. Step 2. Joining and cutting the rack to size. The door must be in the fully closed position. Take the two racks and join them together as shown. Put one of the end caps onto the rack, which is at the end where the door opens. Hold the rack to the full width of the door. and move the pencil three teeth back and mark here. Now cut the rack to size, ready for installation. Attach the other end cap to the rack. Before attaching the rack, the drive system must be installed. Step 3. Installing the drive system. Remove the cover of the drive system. Line up the drive system so that the cog wheel overlaps the non-leading edge of the door by 75 millimeters or 3 inches. Before securing, make sure the drive unit is at least 25 millimeters from the door. Now mark and secure fixings into the door jam. Step 4. Attaching the rack. Align the rack to the cog wheel. Mark the first hole in the rack and secure with self-drilling fixings. Slide door to the middle join in the rack. Ensure rack is engaged to the cog wheel and again mark and secure with self-drilling fixings. Slide door to the fully open position and repeat the process. Now, test the door so that the rack engages smoothly with the cogwheel as the door opens and closes. Step 5. Connecting power up and calibrating. The power adapter can now be connected according to the angle required. Join the extension cable to the adapter, male and female, together. Plug the lead into the recessed end cover of the drive unit. Now plug into power outlet. Turn red power switch on in the drive unit. The door will then either slowly open or slowly close. If the door starts to close, when powered up, wait for the door to be in the fully closed position. The green LED should now be on. Now turn the learn dip switch 1 on, then off. This will put the auto slide into learn mode and the door will then slowly open and close twice to learn its new opening width and how much door weight to carry. If you stop it at any point while the door is opening in learn mode, it will think this is the fully open position. 
You can do this if you don't wish to open to the full width of the door opening. If the door opens rather than closes when you turn the power on, allow it to go to the open position and the green LED light comes on. Now turn the Learn Dip Switch, Dip Switch 1, on and leave on. It will now start closing. The system has now recognized the correct opening direction. Once Learn Mode is finished, the door should stop in the closed position. It is important that the rack has been properly secured so that it does not slip when engaging with the cog wheel. The slam shut dip switch can be switched on if you want the door to slam shut at the end. This can be useful if there is a bit of extra force needed for the door to be fully closed. This will also give more force for when the door initially opens. To set up pet mode, turn the pet learn dip switch on and then off. Now as the door opens slowly, stop it opening with your hand at the width that is enough for your pet. This is how much the door will open when using a pet sensor, pet mat, pet collar sensor, or a remote in pet mode. For added security, an electrical locking device can be purchased from a third party. The required cable is available from Autoslide under the accessories link at autoslide.com. You can access it by choosing products from the drop-down menu. If you are installing an electrical locking device, you need to switch the normally closed or normally open lock dip switch to the position you want the lock to engage. You can plug in your electronic lock cable to the bottom two ports opposite lock on the left-hand side of the drive unit. This will supply 24 volts DC when the door is in the closed position. If the switch has been set to normally open, the lock will be engaged when the door is closed and will unlock when you press the remote button. If the door is very light and does not require full power to operate, you can switch the 75% power switch on before you turn on your auto slide. Once turned on, the door will learn in 75% mode. If at a later date, you need to switch the 75% power off, the door will need to relearn in 100% power mode. When the toggle switch is on, it means when you press the remote, the door opens and will only close when you press the remote again. The beeper dip switch means that the door will signal that it is opening, like this. Step 6. Syncing remotes to work with your door. Press the learn button on the panel. The red light will come on. Press the remote button and the learn button will flash three times. Now press the remote button again and the red light turns off having successfully synced with that remote. Repeat with any other wireless push button remotes or other accessories. To erase all existing remotes, hold the learn button for five seconds. The red light will flash on and off and all remotes will be unsynced from your auto slide. Installing a cavity or pocket sliding door. Step one. Preparing the door and frame. Before installation can begin, the timber fascia needs to be removed. For installing the rack and drive unit, follow the instructions in steps 2 and 3 of the patio door installation. Once the rack and drive unit is attached, you must mark the door frame where the rack support rail will sit on the door. This means you must ensure the teeth are aligned with the cog wheel. Now remove the drive unit and measure up 3 quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters from the marking you made on the door frame. Drill a hole using the half inch drill bit where the marking is made on the frame. The type of door frame you have will affect the way the door frame is cut to make room for the rack. Step 2. Attaching the auto slide. Once the door frame has been prepared, refit the drive unit and attach the rack you marked earlier using half-inch self-tapping screws. When attaching the rack, ensure it aligns with the cogwheel on the drive unit. 
dip switch 5 needs to be on before the door calibrates itself. When the door is calibrating, screw in a screw to stop the door running off the rails. Once it has calibrated itself, the screw can be removed. Calibrating is done in the same way as the patio door as steps 4 and 5. The drive unit by default is set to open a door that slides to the left when you are standing inside. To change the drive unit from left sliding door to right sliding door, start by removing the four Allen key bolts which hold the control box in place. Now remove the four Phillips head screws holding in the motor. Remove the Allen key bolt holding the cog wheel. Pull the cog off and put on the other side. Remove the two Phillips head screws for the end plate. Slide the brush seal to the other end. Slide the two metal plates to the opposite direction. Cut the excess wire clip. Move the control box to the right hand side. Fix the control box loosely to the unit. Position the motor to the left hand side sitting as close as possible to the end plate. Turn the unit over and align the holes on the motor with the pre-drilled holes. Fix the motor to the unit using the aligned holes. Slide the brush seal to the left. Tuck the excess wire into the clips on the control box. Slide the brush seal back into position. Secure end cover back into place. Pop the auto slide name badge out and reposition onto the other hole. Place the main cover back over the unit and adjust the control panel until it is in line with the hole perfectly. Once aligned, tighten the loose Allen key bolts to secure it in. Your unit is now ready to be installed for a right opening sliding door. The auto slide can be attached to a sliding screen door in the same way as the patio door either by attaching it to the floor or top mounted using the optional mounting adapter. We recommend that it be mounted from the top as most screen doors are very light. If mounted on the floor, the rack and cog could slip. Otherwise, follow the same installation steps as in the patio door.